Hi, I'm Amy. Welcome to St. Clair Tech R&D. I'm rather new here at St. Clair Tech. I hope that you enjoy our presentation. Imagine a propulsion system built in a modest workshop which generates directional thrust without expelling any mass. And then it disappeared from public knowledge. This is the story of Roy Thornson and his Ezekiel drive, a technology that shouldn't have worked according to the experts, but did. Welcome back to St. Clair Tech r and I'm Brian. We explore experimental propulsion, documenting real world builds and investigating the unsolved mysteries of science. Today, we delve into the enigmatic Branson Roy Thornson and his Ezekiel Drive, a system that quietly challenged the foundations of physics. Roy Thornson wasn't a lab coat physicist. He was a Manitoba-based inventor with a practical approach and a passion for inertial propulsion. Roy wasn't obscure in any way during his time. He lectured at universities, he presented at technical events, and even demonstrated his Ezekiel drive to aerospace companies. But then his story takes a surprising turn. The Ezekiel was mechanically simple, yet dynamically complex. It used weighted arms moving along precisely timed curved paths creating asymmetric impulses that generated forward motion. Test footage showed a benchtop sized sled and a full size canoe with passengers moving forward without visible reaction mass or propellers of any kind. To skeptics, it looked like vibration. It looked like a fake, but to those who saw it, it was clear. It moved consistently and cleanly. Thornson's claims weren't just anecdotal. Researchers at a New York University, the SUNY Buffalo, State University of New York in Buffalo, successfully replicated his Ezekiel drive, pro providing real world academic validation. But shortly after, Universities across the U.S. reportedly received unofficial warnings about inertial propulsion research and potential funding jeopardy. It wasn't a formal on-the-books directive, but the message was sent loud and clear, back off. Thornton also demonstrated the Ezekiel to multiple aerospace firms in Canada as well as other countries around the world. The response was very baffling. Yes, it works, but no, it doesn't work. This pattern is quite common in fringe propulsion. The effect is observed, but the implications are too disruptive to mainstream to be accepted. Before fading from public view, Thornton began to work on a refined, scalable Ezekiel for aircraft and spacecraft. This was more advanced a more advanced version, but it was never completed or shared publicly. We don't know if it was totally abandoned, was he discouraged, or was he silenced? We do know that he formed his own company to attempt to get his Ezekiel drive accepted, but it seems he was destined to close down the company with only his personal successes to be remembered by. I personally built an Ezekiel style drive based on Thornton's design. It worked. It produced directional thrust, not mere vibration, not shaky imbalance, but true controlled forward motion. Thornton was definitely onto something very real. The fact that this isn't being publicly researched is kind of frustrating, but it's also motivating. It proves that independent research and development still matters.
The Ezekiel drive isn't just an invention. It's a reminder that innovation can come from anywhere. Breakthrough ideas can be buried, not because they fail, but because they succeed too quietly. More information about Roy and his work can be found on my YouTube channel and on my website. What do you think happened to Roy Thornton and his Ezekiel Drive? Let's discuss in the comments. Remember to like this video and subscribe for more experimental propulsion. Next time we will be discussing 125 miles to orbit. What's the big deal? Subscribe for more hands-on propulsion experiments. And until next time, this is Brian St. Clair saying, please be good to each other and be good to yourself. Brian out.